All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the distributive property. Now, the distributive property is really important in algebra, so it's important that you guys get it down now because we're going to use it kind of throughout the year. All right, now the distributive property states that if you have an expression like a times the sum of b plus c, you can get the same answer as if you take a times each of those numbers inside the parentheses. You can do a times b and plus a times c. Okay, so let's look if this really truly does work, because if let's look at this example. Now, if you looked at the left-hand side of this example, normally you just do the order of operations. You do what's in parentheses first. You do 4 plus 5 and get 9, all right? And then multiply by the 3 and get oops, 27. Now, what distributive property says is you can get the same exact answer as if you take that 3 on the outside and multiply by each add in on the inside. So you can do 3 times 4. It's like taking it and distributing it into each one. Okay. So you can do 3 times 4, which is 12, do 3 times 5, which is 15, and add them together. And you notice you get the exact same answer of 27. So it does work. All right. Now realize that you might see, if you look over here in the box I put, you might see the parentheses come first and then a number afterwards. And that still works as well. Remember, a, a number or variable right next to parentheses still means multiplication. So you're taking that number on the outside, like in this example, the 2, and you're multiplying it by each number inside the parentheses. All right. Now, distributive will also work if, there, if there's subtraction between the numbers inside the parentheses. So... Like here, let's test it again. According in this example, according to this example, right here, we if we did order of operations on the left hand side, we do eleven minus seven first, which is four, and then do five times four and get twenty. What distributive property says is you can get the exact same answer, right? If you take that five and and multiply it by each add an in, inside, so we're looking at uh, five times eleven which is 55, and 5 times 7, which is 35. But in this case, since there's a subtraction in between, we're going to subtract them, which, if you notice, gives you that same amount of 20. Okay. Now, where distributive property comes into play is when there's variables involved. Like, for example, if you say, well, why would I bother doing this, Ms. Podolsky? Order of operations is really fast and easy. Well, we're not always going to know all the numbers. So we want to apply this to variables. So if we look at the example, like the first example, it's 3 times x plus 4. Now we're supposed to do the x plus 4 first according to our operations, but we don't know what x is, so we can't add those first. But we can simplify this by using distributive. What we're going to do is we're going to take this 3 and multiply it by into each number inside the parentheses. So 3 times x would give us 3x, 3 times 4 would give us 12. And we put a plus in between because um, there's going to be, um, there's a plus in between the two numbers. Now, I put a little hint over here. It's going to be really important. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. But um, it's often easier to do distributive property that involves subtraction if you change the subtraction to addition and the number after it to its opposite before you distribute. Now, after you get better with the distributive property, you might not need to do this, but sometimes it helps people. Like, for example, we, in this one, we've got negative 4 times 4x minus 9. Now, sometimes people might want to think of this, just to get the sign right, you could think of it as negative 4 times, it would be the same as 4x plus a negative 9. And then distribute that in. Negative 4 times 4x would be a negative 16x. And then a negative, then we know it's got definitely going to be a plus in between here. And a negative 4 times a negative 9 would be a positive 36. Okay. Here's one. Now sometimes, you know, when we had a negative involved, it was easier changing that subtraction to an addition right off. Here, when all the numbers are basically positive, you could just distribute it. And this n on the outside is what we're going to distribute back in into each term. So n times n would give us n squared minus, right, n times 6 is going to give us 6n. All right. So here, number 4, we've got 
negative 10 times 3x, which would give us negative 30x, and then negative 10 times 7 would give us negative 70. Now you could leave it like that, or you could also think of plus a negative 70, or you could also write this as negative 30x minus 70. Plus a negative 70 and minus 70 are basically the same thing. All right, now with number five, you notice we have a fraction involved. We have negative two sevenths times 14f minus 49. Now what you have to remember here is your rules for multiplying fractions, um, and they basically still apply. Basically stuff in your denominator can cancel stuff with the, in with the numerator, but we're still doing the distributive property and bringing this in. In fact, I think I'm gonna think of this right off because minus 49 make my life easier. I'm gonna think of this as plus a negative 49, all right? And what we want to think of this as 2 sevenths, when we do the first distrib distribution, we're going to give 2 sevenths times 14 over 1. And we can do some cross canceling. 7 divided by 7 is 1, 14 divided by 7 is 2, and then 2 times 2 would give us 4, and it's going to be, it's a negative times a positive, so it can be a negative 4f, and I already change this to plus, so I'm going to leave it plus. And then what we have for a second distributive, I'll bring it over here, we'd have 2 sevenths times 49 over 1, which we can cross-divide or cross-cancel. 7 divided by 7 is 1, 49 divided by 7 is 7. And it's a negative times a negative, so it's going to be a positive 14. Okay. What I want you guys to do right now is try... Pause the notes and try the eight practice problems, and then once you've tried them, start back up, then back up, and we'll go over the answers. All right, guys, let's hopefully you've tried all the practice problems. Let's go over them real quick. Uh, first answer here, we distribute in that three. Oops, let's actually move this up. Yep, it'll make it easier for you guys to see. Okay, we have three times x and three times one, we get three x plus three. All right, and number two, um, there's no negatives involved, so I'm not going to switch that subtraction. We would do 7 times x and get ah, 7x, and 7 times 2 and get 14, and put a subtraction in between, so we get 7x minus 14. Okay. Here in number three, we have x outside the parentheses, so we're going to take that into each term. We'd have x times 2, which is 2x. And then we'd have x times 5x, which would give us 5x squared, and there's a plus in between. So we have 2x plus 5x squared. All right, and number four, we're multiplying by d. d times 2 would be 2d minus d times d would be d squared. All right, so... Number five, we're looking, we got multiplied by negative six. Negative six times x would be negative six x. Negative six times three would be negative 18. Now this I wrote as negative six x plus a negative 18. Make sure that doesn't look like a 78. Or you could also technically write this as negative six x minus 18. All right, here. Uh, Negative 3 times t would give us negative 3t plus negative 2, 2 times a negative 3 would give us a negative 6. Again, or you could write it as negative 3t minus 6. I'm really going to accept either answer. Okay. All right, number 7, we can do some canceling with that 4. When we multiply by 3 fourths, we can think of this as 20 divided by 4, which is 5, times the 3 is going to give us a negative 15m. And then four, 16 divided by 4 would be 4, times 3 would give us plus 12. All right. Now here we've got a negative involved in the subtraction, so you could technically think of this as plus a negative 3. And so we'd have negative 4x times 2x, which would give us negative 8x squared plus a negative 4x times a negative 3 would give us 12x. So hopefully you did well on those practice problems. Uh, let's turn the page and talk about 
simplifying using distributive property and combining like terms. Now, what you're going to have to do for this next part of the notes is you're going to have to go to part two of the notes that I saved on the web page. Okay, so this is the end of part one, guys. Go to part two.